Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Channel Legends video. Guys, we're going to talk about perhaps the hardest boss in the game. We're going to talk about how to take down Bommel, specifically targeting this at 90 hard because it really ramps up from 50 hard to 90 hard. Uh, but you can definitely play back some of these strats at the lower levels as well with a kind of weaker version and get the job done. I want to show you kind of like three main strategies and different variations of them. Uh, we're going to be introducing you to other content creators along the way because uh, I've not built all of these out myself, but other creators have. So I'll be linking their videos where I kind of source them in, in the video as well. What I would say here is, firstly, we need to understand Bommel and why he's so damn tough. Yeah, so Bommel, um, I mean, he's a beast, really. He doesn't like you having buffs. Every time you've got buffs or one of his abilities can just buff rip and replace those buffs with bombs. So having buffs in your team is a little bit of a no-no. Um, he doesn't really like you putting debuffs on him. If you do that, he's going to give you some bombs. He doesn't like you turn me to control in him. If you do that, he's going to uh, give you some bombs. Um, and no, he's not. No, he's not. He's going to drop his own little dread bombs, which explode for 40% of your health. Um, so yeah, so there's a few watchouts. There's a few watchouts in terms of bringing in champions that have got masteries where you've got a turn meter drop on it like Evil Eye. That's one watch out. Second watch out is just bringing champions that are going to turn me to control him if you're not preparing to take damage from those bombs. That's the second one. Um, so it ends up being that this is probably the most champion specific boss in the game. And uh, that's a bit of a shame, but also it becomes a bit of a challenge. So uh, we're going to kind of show some different variations today. So I'm going to start by showing you the team I actually run. And this team is quite a speed farm. It's also quite high end and uh, it's also super sexy. This is based on a team that YST originally built and has kind of refined. It's super cool. It needs Nishak. Nishak's probably the best champion in the game to beat Bommel. I'd say he is, straight up. Even if you can't re recreate this team, Nishak is godly. Yeah, because he's able to put bombs on Bommel and they do colossal amounts of damage and he puts them out there free willy. He's doing it all the time. Now, alongside him here, we've got some ways to get more bombs on. So I've got two ally attack champions. These could be pretty much any of the ally attack champions in the game. You could be using the Fat Man, you could be using Lanakis, etc. Yeah, they're just, you just need ways to get Nishak's A1 away. And Nishak's A1 lands bombs. Yeah, his A3 also lands bombs. And that's what we're trying to do, get Nishak's A1 away on the boss as many times as we can in a really short period of time. We've then got Arbiter. Now, Arbiter could also be Runekeeper uh, Dejurk. He could be, I guess he could be Pelikath but not as, not as decent. Arbiter's really good because she's bringing you increased attack, which means that Nishak's bombs scale harder, and she's bringing weaken on her A1. So when she gets an ally attack off, she applies a weaken with her A1, which means the, bomb will, uh, the bombs do more damage. Leo's in here as a wave clearer. Could be any wave clearer in the game. Uh, I guess I'll show you some stats here. Mainly showing you Nishak's, I guess, because his is the most important, but... Somewhere over six and a half thousand attack is what you want. Somewhere over, let me just talk to you about Bommel's stats actually. Bommel's got 250 speed, 90 hard, and you need 350 plus accuracy. So I'm going to just over 200 speed because Arbiter is going to increase our turn meter fill, which means that we will still get a go when we're over 200 speed if Arbiter's in the mix. Six and a half K attack would be enough to kill this boss with seven bombs and then we've got uh, enough accuracy to do the job as well more than i need here and i'll just show you the setup for my ai because it is important actually so nishak do what you like really on wave one start holding your a3 on wave two and then on wave three open with your a3 and then it's just do your a1s Alorius, we're just kind of like basically using one of the aoe's for each wave but Whoever your wave killer is, you just kind of need to manage that. It's mainly wave two 
that you need help with with your wave killer. Longbeard or any ally attacker, just hold your ally attack ability until the boss. Same thing with Creela here, holding my ally attack until the boss. Uh, but I am using her other AoE to help me on wave two. And in Arbiter, I just hold the A3 until we get to the boss. Okay, so let's watch this run. So yeah, with this level of stats, we need to get eight, no, seven bombs on the boss. So you can see here the wave clear is super slick. Arbiter's even finishing people off. Wave two, we're relying on Leo's nuke, really. A bit of Kreela nukeage as well, but not that much because our stats are not that great. But bam, bam, bam. One to go. Normally it's a bit quicker than that, but it's still quick. Now, here we get to the boss. Increase attacks on. First ally attack, we apply one bomb. We then get our A3 into our A1. We're up to, what's that, six bombs. We apply another bomb from the second ally attack. And that should be all she wrote. And down goes Bommel. So that's one of the best teams in the game. And, uh, you know, 21 turns is pretty disgusting. I've seen YST do another variation recently with like a poison exploder coming in if you don't have enough ally attackers and stuff. But um, yeah, this is a super quick team, super fun team as well. That's number one. The second strat is around solo champions taking this boss down. And we're going to call on a couple of other creators at this point. So this is Odd One Gaming's video looking at Annabelle. Annabelle's one of the best champions for this, for this rotation, because of her affinity. So she's actually strong affinity against Bommel. You can see here, Odd One has built Annabelle with 253 speed, 75,000 health, 3.5-ish thousand defense. And you do need Warmaster as your main mastery. So it's quite stat heavy, but then most of the solo builds are. And what he does here, so... He brings in other champions just to help him get through the waves. So in his team here, he's got basically a wave killer, Annabelle, and then some fodder. And in his mastery setup, which we can take a look at a bit further on in the video, he gains extra speed as the fodder dies. So you can see here, extra speed from this mastery, extra speed here as she kills stuff as well. So she's kind of like topping up her speed as we go. And basically, it's literally just a case of Annabelle soloing the boss, everyone else being dead. <laughs> That's what it is. How she does it, all of her damage is coming from Warmaster. There's no other damage in her build. But if we look at what, um, what Lady Annabelle can do, and there's another champion called Buren Giri that does the same type of thing. She's basically able to... Where is she? Banner Lord. She's basically able to regen health through a passive when the bombs explode. So she heals by 50% whenever an ally or an enemy dies. Yeah, so when those bombs pop, although they hit her for 40% of her health, she heals for 50. Yeah, so she's absolutely fine. And then she's also got a bit of healing going on on her A1. And that's kind of it, really. You don't want to use her A3 at all. You would turn that off. And you don't really want to use the A2 either. Because basically it's putting out debuffs, which is going to put bombs on you. So you just turn those off and you A1 uh, the boss to death. And if we look at Odd One's uh, team here, this one basically takes the best part of, I think it was around 10 minutes. Yeah, 8 to 10 minutes with Lady Annabelle doing all of the damage. It's one of the most accessible solo 90 hard champions in the game, I would say. Second one we're going to look at is... The most accessible champion, but a very difficult, um, well, it's manual. At least Lady Annabelle there was auto. This one's manual. So Cold Brew here talking about Templar. Templar is a farmable rare. So it's the easiest one to get, albeit Cold Brew's having to put some pretty decent gear on this Templar. So uh, you're talking about 70 odd K health, 3K defense, around 240 speed. That's the only stats that we care about. And he's done that in Immortal and Regen Gear. Again, we've got the same sort of masteries where you're gaining speed for Whirlwind of Death. You're gaining speed for this blue one here, which I can never think it's Spirit Haste. And then all of the damage is coming from Warmaster. So same sort of concept as what we've just seen with Odd One. 
The trouble with this one is it is manual. So Cold Brew's bringing in here a couple of wave killers um, and basically a way to, to make it through the waves. Once you're onto the, the boss here, you're basically one man in, or you're just kind of like soloing the boss. So he waits until the dread bombs are basically at full turn meter. And then he will do the block damage ability so that he's not going to lose any health when the dread bombs go off. And then it's just rinse and repeat, but it's fully manual. You can't, at least I've not seen this done full auto. I might be wrong. I've not seen it done full auto. You know, Cold Brew's run here is like 20 odd minutes. Again, though, if like, if you're just trying to beat this once over and you, you do it every three months, it's a 20 minute run out of your life and you move on with Doom Tower. But it's, it's a tough one. I've never built the team myself. But yeah, I will link Cold Brew's um, Bommel team down below for you guys to check out if that's going to be the one you go for. Another one, which is actually the champion I use on my free to play, albeit I'm doing it on normal and I'm doing it with Immortal Stroke Regen gear. But um, this is a really cool one here from YST using Cornelia against Bommel 90 Hard using Frenzy gear. There's a couple of like watch outs. You do have to have Carapace as a blessing it only needs to be level one but it does need to be on it's going to reduce the damage you take um by 10 percent, which is, ends up being quite a lot when it comes to this fight the stat requirement is similar to what we've seen really 70 odd k health 3.9k defense which is quite high but then he's got much less speed so 217 speed and the reason for that is because he's in frenzy gear which fills turn meter up and this is quite a cool strat so Similar sort of idea on the waves. He's got wave killers in there. Cornelia does kill a couple of the like the last ones up. And Cornelia has got like an inbuilt heal mechanic when she puts a sleep on herself. So the cool thing here is she sleeps herself after one of the bomb goes off because of the frenzy gear so that she's able to get the full heal from the second bomb. And it is all speed tuned. I would advise watching the video in full if you kind of want to run a Cornelia strat, because YST details it out really well. But again, it turns out to be a long run, a bit like the Templar. It's a 20 odd minute run. It's not something you want to do to farm Bommel. It's just something you want to do to kind of beat Bommel down for the first time. So that's going to be the second strat. And I will link that down below as well. Now, the third strat is something I've been working on, which is. Basically, I guess how Bommel was meant to be farmed, but it's much harder to get to level 90, much harder. So I've been working on a team which at the moment I can only get working on level 50. And it's based on a kind of like a Vogoff plus Geo team. But I'm trying to throw in there Croydy in the blue, Croyd in the blue, uh, Creodan the blue. I'm going to say that wrong tons in this video. But basically what we do here is we utilize the freeze ability to freeze some of those dread bombs. If you freeze a dread bomb, they do half damage. Okay, we're not going to use his A3 on the boss, but it's not bad for getting through the waves. And then his A1 will also target bombs on the boss fight. It's a shame that his affinity is bad for the fight. But actually this dude is pretty solid to help us through. Bogoff has got an inbuilt passive which helps us heal. So whenever one of the bombs goes off, we get some healing back. And everyone else is basically a support or a healer in the team. And we watch this through. Geo is the main form of damage. Geo's damage comes from him applying a burn to the boss and then his passive applying damage to the boss whenever anyone in your team is hit whilst that boss is under burn, including when the dread bombs go off as well. So this is kind of like the third main strat that people use. Geo plus Vogoff in some sort of iteration. So for this one, just showing you the team setup, showing you the stats we're running. I've got Geo in uh, stalwart gear, 52K health, 3.4K defense, more than 250 speed so that he gets his burnout straight away. I only need 350 odd accuracy, it's just built for something else. Vogoff, very high health is the main thing. Just high health and reasonable defense. The more, I'd say definitely go health rather than defense because the more health Vogoff loses, the more healing Vogoff does to your team. Godseeker, I've just got built for Sand Devil right now. So decent health, decent defense and fast. But this is a build I'm already using just elsewhere. Don't need like the big blessings and stuff. It's just what I've got. Doom Priest, just as quick as you can with good health and defense. 
So the more turns Doom Priest has, the more she's going to cleanse and the more she's going to heal. Do want to turn off her A2 on the boss because it does increase attack. And um, and in Croydon here, we just want to get back to the A2 as often as we can. So I actually turn off the A3 on the boss, use the A2 whenever possible to try and freeze the bombs. And I've got him in reflex gear to try and do that as quick as, as often as possible. But that's not a requirement. It's just a, a nice to have. And I've got him with lower accuracy here, 260 odd, because he only needs to freeze the bombs. He can't freeze bomb all. Therefore, you only need like 250 accuracy on 90 hard to be able to freeze the bombs. Otherwise, I've just gone defensive stats. So let's show you this on 50 then. And, um, and then I'll show you an alternative for 90. So it's worth saying with this team here, like I tried it on 90. I got a bit pummeled on 90. Bomb will just straight up hits too hard. And honestly, I would need a second Vogoff in the team, probably instead of probably in the blue. Um, yeah, there, there was just too much going on really for the team of kind of epics only to get it done. The teams I've seen do it, uh, I know Scratch has got a video out on it where he uses double Vogoff. I don't own a second Vogoff right now, so I couldn't show you it. But um, ultimately, uh, I guess I could show you Scratch's version of it whilst this is playing out. So Scratch has a version here where he basically is running double Vogoff, Doom Priest, God Seeker, and then Geo. And the idea is that Geo puts out a burn on the boss. The double Vogoff will keep you alive. And uh, the others just get kind of like healing in between. You just want to make sure you're not dropping any buffs when it comes to the boss. Because we get on the boss... The more buffs you've got on you, the more uh, bombs you're going to get on you. The, the kind of, um, yeah, the little bombs you see here on Geo. So at this point, I've put Crudian the blue in because he does freeze the bombs. He actually goes after the bombs full auto, which is cool. That's good coding from Raid. But the trouble with this type of comp is you just get hit with so much damage. Even with Vogloff healing here, you've seen we needed the revive from Geo. All of the damage is coming from Geo, by the way. Look, anytime that burn is on and damage comes on us, Geo's doing phenomenal amounts of damage on the boss. But we just need healing, healing, healing. We go after the bomb, get the freeze, which is so cool. I like the way they've coded that. And his AoE freeze, although it's weak affinity, will still have a decent chance to land. So, you know, it's just, it is sketchy as hell. This is level 50 and it's sketchy. Level 90, with the stats I'm running on this team, uh, I just got pounded, honestly. It was, it was too much. And I thought, for this type of video, you know, the, the level of gear I was going to have to throw in, or maybe I could throw in my Iron Gut in, in place of the second Bommel. Perhaps we'll try that in a second, actually, and see if it works. Geo goes down again. Need him back up, please, God Seeker, because he's our only damage. The, the freeze on the bombs is clutch because it halves the damage we're going to take from that god seeker pick up geo oh so tight it's literally so tight but i do like croyd in here it's a shame his affinity is, is weak because actually his ability to land those uh, freezes on the bombs is really cool and the fact that he goes after it with his a1 as well really cool he's want to make sure you turn off his a3 uh, i guess we will because i'm just thinking of it as we're going like Iron Gut is basically Vogoff Mark II. Yeah, so if we was to just switch up that team now. Yeah, so just playing around with this idea of basically the double Vogoff, but I don't have a Vogoff. I've got um, Brazil Iron Gut as my second Vogoff in this team. We're going to do something which um, Nub Raids did in a really fun video, but I think Nub Raids was going against a much lower level Bommel, so I don't know if this is going to work out on 90, but the, the theme, I guess, is the same. You basically got double healing from the equivalent of double Vodoffs. Yeah. You've got Visix just popping as many bombs as possible with her A1, which is a, a speed drop ability. And Geo um, doing his burn. So it's a similar strat to what we've just seen. But this one is the idea of this one is actually to keep Bommel's turn meter down. 
and just rely on the bombs hitting you to do all of the damage. Physics does help with wave clear. She's going to help uh, clean this wave out pretty quick. Obviously, where it's normally double vode off, I'm using old big boy here because I don't have the second vode off. But the idea is the same apart from he, in one way, is a liability because of the extra buffs he brings. And in one way, he's way bigger because he brings you enemy max HP hits. But let's get to the boss and see if it actually works on 90 hard. Okay, wave clear is pretty quick. 1 minute 20. So the idea here is we put a burnout. We drop turn meter. And then physics is A1 just keeps dropping turn meter. We're, we're proccing as many bombs as we actually can. And because it's not just a, a turn meter drop, it's actually a turn meter steal on physics's A1. She gets back to it really quick. Look at all these bombs out and you're like, damn, this is, this is troublesome. Well, actually, Bommel is the problem here on stage 90, more so than the bombs. The bombs, if you've got this kind of like Vogoff stroke um, iron gut setup, they do a lot of damage, but because we heal from it, we heal from the bombs going off, it's actually the geo burn that's doing the work. The bombs are just kind of like, well, whatever, we're healing for as much as we're taking. So the issue being, iron gut throwing out buffs here is actually causing stuns. And when we take a stun, Bommel is actually getting his turns pretty comfortably. Obviously dropping my uh, Geo there. We should pick him back up with Godseeker, I think. Got the revive? Yeah, we have. So we can start getting it going again. Did resist one of the turn meter drops there. But that's the concept. And it's a scary concept because you're taking so much damage all the time. Another resist. So yeah, I've not got quite enough accuracy in our build here. But it's damn close. I think we do this. I think we do it against 90 hard. Got the Iron Guts passive kicking in there just to give us a bit more safety. Oh, it feels squeaky, but it is done. And I think that is... It, although it doesn't look like it, I think that's actually 100% team. But this is obviously relying on either having double Vodoff or Vodoff plus Grazur. Good builds. Physics is, is, I suppose, interchangeable with someone who does turn me to drop. And Geo is kind of a necessary evil in this team. There we go, guys. I hope that was helpful or interesting. If you don't have any of those champions and you're on the very low levels, then I'll tell you one other champion that you might just want to take a look at. And that is this fella here, the smiling master butcher who's also got a very cool passive in terms of healing allies by damage that those those dread bombs do so this is something as like a mini vogue off type of champion only really works on the normal side of doom tower you start throwing him into hard and i don't think you can tank the damage but definitely a decent champion to kind of utilize if you're trying to get through the early stages there you go guys i've been hell hades that's the bomb all i'll see you later